form a seat and say, and you need to be paranoid, um, you know, to, 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 to survive as a, big company, as a big company. But I think that, you know, I mean, the, the, the learning I took from this certainly was, like, don't, don't hang around personally fossilizing a big company, you know, um, just, just kind of, you know, thinking it will endure, like it won't. And it's more interesting to be part of the, part of the, sort of the problem uh, of, you know, part of the destruction than part of the, kind of, taking over dear life. <laughs> Uh, there, um, maybe uh, part of that question is, is uh, there are people here who maybe want to create their own companies and they need to understand those ways, but if you're looking for employment, I suppose maybe you're asking the question, how do, how do you start a company that's going to disappear next week, or avoid well, starting a company? These things are built up immediately, the life cycles aren't, it's not like a butterfly type thing, it's, you know, uh, like a technology company that's, that's going to fail outright, you know, as a bad idea, that doesn't get traction, it will last like a year, but it won't raise capital. You know, it'll be kind of the, the original founders sitting around their kitchen table with a whiteboard and, 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 and no income. So, like, you know, if you get to the point of having a product, having customers, having revenue, having, you know, raising capital, you know, that business, you know, that will then last kind of two years. And then if you kind of maybe break even, then you're going to last four years. You know, so there are certain cycles and it's not, you know, again, it should be, it should be guided by what you're interested in and even what you love doing. And that's particularly true, uh, you know, in a smaller, a smaller outfit that matters more than you care what you're doing because. It's never been high. Say something for the big companies. It's certainly always in the fossil for the big company. Um, no, on, on, a, on a serious note here, I think um, uh, the, this equally applies to small and large companies. Um, I think, some, and we are currently on a, you know, the, the, the downward or maybe we're at the, the bottom of the, of the trough in this current cycle. I think companies that are surviving through this, and I mean, even in a big company like Google, with a huge amount of that time of thing and really rationalizing and really looking, but we've never stopped innovating and investing in R&D uh, and things like that. So I think smaller companies and large companies, if they can afford to, to continue to do that through this cycle, and then the wave starts going again, and I think you know that's when you know you can really be very, very successful as part of this wave. If you're successful when things aren't going so well, you know, the, the odds are you're going to be much, much more successful when things start to improve. Um, any questions? Um, what advice would you have for recent graduates who are job seeking at the moment are, and are in a much more competitive environment than being told, you know, you really need to have experience because other people applying for jobs have experience? Yep, I can, I can certainly, certainly start, start, start the answers to that one. Um, but one of my roles in, in Dublin is part of the Dublin Hiring Committee where on a weekly basis we review all the candidates that are that are coming in. And we're, like, we are hiring sometimes just to buy bill for, for what we're losing, people going back to our home country. Um, it's very interesting looking across the, the different resumes that we receive in the different packs. And you're right, it's great even to hire graduates. We're always looking to see what sort of experience that they, they have had. And it's hard to you know, get experience about the job and get the job without, without having the experience. Uh, again, I don't want to beat up too much on, on, on Irish graduates at the moment, but we have less and less Irish graduates with some really valuable internships and experience. Um, we get to see these from you know people across across Europe, and they seem to have spent six month internship with you know Fujitsu or with you know with Siemens or with BMW or something like that, some really really big companies, and I think that's that's really really valuable. What I would add is if. As a graduate now, there, there, there is no work. I think that the bottom line on, on Philip's presentation was you know, about getting out there. Whether it's charity work, whether it is you know, McDonald's as, as an extreme, but actually getting that experience, whether it's in customer service, whether it's working as part of a team, any experience is very, very valuable. Um, and I know even those jobs are, are hard to come by, but my recommendation would be to get involved in some charity work, some you know, not, not for profit. Um, there are lots and lots of people out there who would, you know, would gladly take a graduate and use the skills that they built up in the previous, you know, four or five years now. So that would be my first step. Yeah, I think Jake said, well, they could get out there and, and, and do something. The, uh, I happened to have a look at um, the careers portal that I used this morning. There are four internships advertised there. And how many people look at it? Or you've got to look and, and um, do something. And it used to be that uh, Irish uh, folk tended to be extremely successful in the interview because they didn't just turn up with the masters or the or the um, uh, MBA 